Everyone, we are here with director Rodrigo Godinho, and he has a new film coming out July 11th on digital and VOD uh, called The Breach. And uh, Rodrigo, how are you, man? Very good, Norman. Thank you. Thank you for having me on your show. Oh, it's, I don't know, it's a privilege. I mean, I've, I, you know, I've read Rue Morgue for, for, <laughs> for years and, you know, seeing you get into films is inspiring and very cool. Um, but you. can can you tell us about The Breach? Yeah, um, well, this is a movie that I shot during the pandemic. Uh, so oh. it seems like a long time ago, yeah. Wow, um, a lifetime ago. Yeah, yeah, a, lifetime, a few lifetimes off, you know. Uh, but yeah, it, it, it came to me um, in 2020, um, sort of uh, early fall or late summer. And I was uh, given the script by uh, Mike Pash at Raven Banner. And, um, you know, he said, hey, do you want to do this? Do you want to work on this together? And of course, you know, I was being the pandemic. I was like, yeah, please, like, let's just do something. You know, we're just everyone staring at their walls. We're in lockdown everywhere. Thankfully, the script was good. Um, and uh, I did ask for if I could do some changes and they were everybody was very accommodating. For that and um and then away we went really like honestly um norman sometimes you work on a movie for years and it doesn't get off the ground this one from the time i received the script to the time i was shooting it's been about eight weeks so it was very very fast wow and, uh, just hit the ground running yeah. and it was just like they wanted to shoot be the first out of the gate to be shooting uh you know after lockdown or or during that time um, and I think they, yeah, they achieved it. They were one of the, if I believe the first production in Ontario to, to be shooting. Uh -huh. Yeah. So you guys, you guys had everything locked and loaded and ready to go. So when restrictions were eased slightly, uh, yeah, you right. guys were able to, were, were there any logistical things? Uh, it always fascinates me to talk to, uh, filmmakers who dealt with the pandemic, um, and how they kind of creatively worked around things. Um, were there any logistical issues that you had to navigate during the shoot? It seemed like the entire shoot was a logistical issue. <laughs> <laughs> well, I mean, in and of itself, yeah. yes, it is. But yeah. yeah, no, I hear you. Um, well, you know, I think the fact that we're a uh, independent production it really helped us. It was in our favor because uh, I had there were some actors I was working with, Alan Hocko. I believe he was on a Netflix series at the time and he told me they it was color coded uh masks and you couldn't do this and it was a it was a choreography behind the scenes of who could be near who and who came on set and who left and it was a nightmare the, the, uh, with us it was far more simpler the 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 production had the the uh, genius idea of just bubbling everybody just everybody get into this hotel in 14 days and then away we go everybody yeah. can come out of their room and and uh, and they just hang out and just be together and just not worry about that kind of thing so we ended up uh, that's what ended up happening um and uh you know it 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 created this really amazing onset experience where people were just like kind of together and you know for many of us it was the first time um we had we were being social after you know six months of being locked up or seven or whatever it was you know and um so um it was a really special time and it created this a lot of enthusiasm a lot of just genuine happiness to be working together just to be doing something cool of course working on a horror movie you know so it was a really special time yeah there's already kind of that familial vibe going on on a, on a good set so i can only imagine you know, but it was like, yes, you know. Yes, absolutely. Yeah. But, you know, there were a lot of challenges back to your question that, you know, I I, I, I thought we were going to have the run of the place where we were shooting, but obviously with COVID, there was all these restrictions, we couldn't shoot anywhere. So we had to be really, really creative and ended up uh, shooting most of the movie in around the hotel we were all staying at. So we ended up turning the ballroom into the different rooms of the house and the attic of the house. And we ended up, uh, sort of uh, just being super creative the front of the house we had to create it like sort of inside of this barn um it, it was just uh you know we had to be very careful and very uh just very smart about how we we shot this movie that's to me that that is just so i don't know it's 
super cool. Very, very interesting. So, okay, you got the script and what what made you want to tell this story or, or helm this, this film? Well, this particular script, I found that the script moved really well. <laughs> you know what I mean? There, there's, there's, there's scripts that don't really move and there's scripts that move and this one moved. It, 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 it kept me engaged right through the whole thing. Um, and, you know, I think that also the fact that uh, the writers, uh, Craig Davidson, whose his pen name is Nick Cutter, as well as Ian Weir, his co-writer, and the production team, were, were they were very accommodating to me making some changes. So, uh, you know, they allowed me to do that, uh, of course, within the time that I had. And, and so that made it a little bit more my, my uh, you know, made it my own. Um, and... Um, I think the Lovecraft element was a really big part of it too. Just just to have that, so, you know. From I'm I'm a I'm a you know I'm a genre guy. I, lo I love the genre, obviously. You know, I've been in it for the past 25 years professionally, and this was something. Um, you know, most of the time, Norman, I write uh, my own stuff and uh, and I shoot my own stuff. Um, this one, because I didn't write it, and I could see right in the script that this is not something I would usually write. That for me was an opportunity to to kind of explore something I wouldn't typically do so I would you know there's a lot of excitement around around all that and I wanted to just hey you know what what about just making a movie kind of like a summer horror movie that that is just entertaining you know that 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 just works and then you know that was the challenge I was up for and uh it, it turned out to be a lot of fun there it's interesting that you you mentioned that you generally directed the things that you wrote um what can I'd like to go into a little bit more some of the elements that uh, their script, Nick and Ian's script, um, brought to things that you had not thought of yet or hadn't worked with yet? Right. Well, I've never really done a creature feature per se, um, a movie that. Um, I will I will say it this way, usually the the, the stuff that I write. Um, I like to explore certain themes and I like to explore cinema, the way the camera moves and what you can kind of do with sort of, it's kind of like had an experimental edge to it. Uh -huh. Um, certainly my short films are like that. Uh, I did a movie, which was in one photograph, the entire movie was one photograph and the camera just zooms in and out of this photograph and tells a story. So I'm, I'm, I'm very interested in in how you know being kind of a bit self-aware of the camera and using it in a in a, an untraditional way to, to to kind of tell a story this movie was not written that way obviously it was oh. just more it, it was it was literally a horror movie had all these elements and you just kind of told the story so for me it was like okay how can i tell the story in a really interesting way and how can i capture these characters that i how could you know that I didn't write, so I don't have this really strong connection to them. How can I make a connection to them? How can I cast it in a very interesting way? So it became a lot more pragmatic, much more, you know, how can we realize this vision rather than getting lost in all of these subtleties of theme and, and all these other experimental ideas that I have that I carry with me all the time when I make a movie. It's what do you think that that helped things? It certainly helped me to understand um the onset experience or get a different perspective on the onset experience because when you're not so close to the material you really kind of relax it allows you in a way to be more creative so it, 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 it or I wouldn't say more creative but it opens up a different door for you really and it just right. kind of you experience it differently and that was really really um it it was very beneficial to me I think it's something that I'm going to take into other uh other uh productions in the future awesome awesome okay so i gotta know how slash became involved with the uh the, the project right. he was he's executive producer on the film right so slash and i worked for several years on a on a horror western actually unfortunately i never got off the ground yet um but um you know um when this came up i just kind of shot him the script and see if he wanted do to be part of it I, I you know ever since i met him back in 2000 and i want to say 2013 mm -hmm. we you know he's always wanted to get into making movies and making more movies and he, you know he only had that 
us uh, nothing left to fear movie that he, he 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 managed to get off the ground and so but he's always you know every time i talked to him it was like oh this this other project this could be cool blah 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 there's just a lot of sticks in the fire um <clears throat> so i uh I gave him a, a, a shout and sent him the material. He connected with it, and he was like, "Let's do this." I, you know, I said, "Look, I'm, we're shooting. We're shooting in whatever it was at that time, eight weeks, seven weeks." And so he said, "Okay." Uh, and and then he was really gracious about, um, you know, doing some music for it. And I mean, he was he was rehearsing for a big Guns and Roses show. And uh, he managed to make some time uh, and, and put some music together. So I was I was thrilled. He's yeah, he's he's amazing. Um, he even I don't know if you've been out here to Halloween Horror Nights in Hollywood, but he's composed tons of music for some of the mazes and haunted houses out here. Um, and it's yeah. always just so solid, you know. Yeah. Oh man, he yeah, he's a genre guy through and through. I mean, he he said it a few times. If he wasn't making music full time, he would be in, in the horror genre like full time. He 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 and he really knows his stuff. You know, when I first met him, I didn't know I mean I knew Guns N' Roses, but I didn't know anything. I didn't know what kind of person he was or anything. I, I you know, I maybe he was just some guy like, hey, cool horror movies, you know, I don't know. But he really like he he's he knows the genre, he's he's he knows the stuff subtleties of the genre he's really good at um uh, uh assessing scripts and and stories and stuff so he's he's really versed um one of the reasons why uh you know we're, we launched a new uh company which we just announced uh, a few months ago i guess it was but uh so uh you know we're going to be producing uh, more movies together that is so, awesome hey. such good news uh, I, so I guess my final question for you really is, you know, why horror? What is it about? I mean, I know my answer, but what is it about the genre that just, you know, just yeah. keeps you keeps you involved and 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 lures you in? Well, I'd like to hear your answer too, Norman. Actually, but for me, the best way I can put it is is just that's what comes out of me. If if somebody asks me. Um, to write a romance tomorrow or something i could write it but it would be in the language of horror it just it's just that's my happy place really honestly it just it's really i've always been fascinated by um by that side of the human imagination the dark side of the human imagination and also i have a very strong interest in psychology and the unconscious and the dream language and those dream symbols that are very akin to to horrific images and uh uh, dramatic images, we'll say, um, because um, they're essentially the um, the mystery side of the the mind. You know, the the side we don't have really control or we can't rationalize. Um, so, um, you know, I think horror for me is is like a, a a big dark pool with a lot of mystery, a lot of depth to it, and and a lot of it is unexplored. So for me, it's it's. Uh, it's always um, super exciting and um, kind of a voyage of discovery every time I wade into those waters. But I'm I'm actually interested. What 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 about you? Oh man. Well, okay. Uh, okay. So I guess the short answer is that it is a lens that you can process things through uh to make them something you can confront it's something that you can process um it's also a brilliantly flexible genre you know that can be comedy it can be you know it can be straight horror it can be drama it can be romance it can it can be all of these things and still contain the horror elements but ultimately to me it is um a very empowering very engaging genre that is you know the genre of the final boy the underdog the the you know and it is the it's a way to look at the darkness and process it and laugh or at least process it uh and right, right. i also i also 
you know, when people tell me, oh my God, I, I just don't like horror. I'm like, no, no, no. You just haven't found what you like yet. You know, because to me, horror is consensual. The minute, the minute that you feel out of control or like, oh my God, oh my God. Okay. That's not for you, but it's a tool to help people process what's really messing with them, bothering them. And that's, that's why I love the genre. That's fantastic that you've mentioned a few things that I hadn't thought of there. That's, uh, that's really great. And also you're absolutely right about the flexibility of the genre. And that's, that's really, I, th I sometimes think it's the, uh, it's the kind of, it's the genre that, um, that, that it can still be dangerous in the sense that you just never know what you're going to get. Well, yes. Because no matter how you cast it, right? Yeah. yeah. Right. That's its nature. Yeah, right. absolutely. Yeah. Yeah. That's great. So that's, that's my answer. But... Fantastic, Norman. I enjoyed that. That's uh, great. Thank you for even asking. That's awesome, dude. Um, but uh, yeah, so The Breach. I have not seen it yet. Forgive me. I plan no on watching it because uh, mm -hmm. the minute the minute I saw it had Lovecraftian elements, I was like, okay, I'm in. You know, because The Void. Did you see The Void? Absolutely, yeah. I um, love The Void. Yeah, incredible. Brilliant, brilliant film. So I'm very eager to watch The Breach as well. Uh, and everybody, just a reminder, it's coming out on digital and VOD July 11th of this year. So that's just like a few days away. Uh, so Rodrigo, please come back, talk to me more about more of your projects in the future and best of luck on the breach when it comes out on the 11th. Thank you so much, Norman. Really. Thank you uh, also for having me on your show. This is fantastic. I really appreciate it. Likewise. Thank you. Take care, dude. Okay. Thanks, man. Cheers.